when I had the idea to do this back in October, it was on a much smaller scale. It was about just linking up some businesses that could co potentially collaborate and uh, had something to offer each other, and they could be mutually beneficial. And then it, you know, the the concept and grew from there. And we had so many people that were willing to pitch in their talents and their time and their efforts, uh, and and uh, really their leadership and expertise. That um, the final product of, on, of the delegation just was really something I could not have anticipated. So how was the planning of the trip? I think the plan of the trip went really well. Uh, we couldn't have done it without the World Trade Center. And obviously Bruce, uh, you know, Bruce Roberts, CEO of August Mission, uh, really had the vision to create long-term change in, in Ukraine. And we realized early on that we were making a huge impact with what we were doing, um, but it would fall short of what the country needed. Um, and so, you know, really early on just identifying a couple key industries, agriculture to be uh, the first one, and asking the question, how can we bring, uh, you know, the, the technology, the resources, the, the relationships to Ukraine so Ukraine can rebuild and, and, and begin to, you know, benefit from, uh, yeah, some of these relationships. And it very quickly it turned into uh, something much, much bigger. The World Trade Center introduced August Mission to us. The one, one thing about August Mission is they keep you busy. Very good um, coordination, lots of work time, and making good connections. Meeting the, the delegation was an interesting process. Uh, I had met some of them, uh, some of them in person, uh, with our kind of pre-planning that we did back in, in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, and then some of them over Zoom, uh, virtually. But it was the first time we had in Warsaw when we landed all of the delegation together, all of our team together on the ground, and it was a, a wonderful moment. I met Bruce some time ago and realized that he was doing some great things for August Mission for the refugees here. And I, I saw a lot of stress on his face, and he said, I'm spending too much time trying to raise money for these things instead of actually doing the things that I'd like to do to help the people. So um, we brought him together and said, let's, uh, let's bring some of our organizations together, go out there and meet some of the government, see how we can help and help finance your August mission. Actually, Bruce and I were the first ones that were gonna come over here alone, and that's when we decided to bring in the World Trade in Uwada. I sit on the board of the World Trade Center as well and make this a much larger thing because there's so many businesses that want to come contribute to the August mission and be part of this effort. My planning was was great. Um, you know, worked with Stephen at World Trade Center pretty closely to develop the schedule, really look at the logistics, the security, um, and and ask the question: How are we going to move 30 people through Ukraine, right, an active war zone? Uh, and we've been on the ground for quite a while, and and so we have that logistical network. You know, we're comfortable, and so it was it was a great planning process that escalated quickly. Um, and we needed to adapt even quicker once we got on the ground due to just the, the, the incredible uh, interest and, yeah, again, building relationships. So the most important thing is um, meeting Bruce and his organization uh, and supporting him. I, I think he's got a great mind and a great heart. Uh, we've done this in... Iraq and Afghanistan, where we support the people, work with local people, and help build recovery. So our idea is to bring our experience and our capability working with the uh, Ukrainian people and helping them in this time of need. And I just want to be part of those kinds of things. We're, we're a company, we make money, but we know how to do it and we're good at it and we're not you know we're not greedy uh, we want to help the people of, of ukraine and uh, make some money doing it crossing the border from poland into ukraine was an incredible sight see the the rich and fertile farmland that just fills this country it's no wonder they call it the breadbasket of eastern europe 
in addition, I've really enjoyed getting to know the people who have all been incredibly warm and hospitable. These experiences are, are really important because you get to know people. You get to feel what they feel and uh, walk in their shoes for just a short time. I'm Vicky, local Victoria. I'm working with August Mission, like country manager for August Mission America and director of August Mission Ukraine now. I met August Mission last year. That meeting that changed my life and now we're changing lives of many, many Ukrainians and I'm very proud to be part of this organization. We want to learn what we can do with our products and services to help the, the Ukrainian people, you know, in the world. Uh, we think we have some products that would help them even if they weren't in a war-torn situation, but e even more so now. We have some products that will really help them with their agricultural needs. Uh, we know that they're uh, the breadbasket of this whole region and, and needing to get some of these products to the rest of the world. and. If we can help them make them better and cheaper and everything, this is what we want to accomplish during this trip. So. My first impressions, I knew that Ukraine produced a lot of wheat, a lot of exports, oil, seeds, different things like that. But just to be here to see the vistas and the beauty of the farm ground is, has been very impressive. As far as the people, uh, the people match the beauty of the land, uh, beautiful people a lot of eagerness to improve their situation and to work with the United States to solve issues and problems and a lot of interest with the state of Utah to trade technologically and uh, you know to work together that way. very difficult and I had no idea the devastation here. As you see the homes that have been destroyed and the people that have lost everything, their pictures, their, their, their heritage, and then you see the need for humanitarian effort. It, it's a devastation that I think most people don't understand. And then you tell them that there's help tell them there's hope, tell them they're not alone, tell them there are organizations like August Mission and, and all of the foundations that are supporting August Mission and seeing the people get the, the supplies, get the, the mattresses, the food, the clothing that they need and to see little kids, uh, moms, it is an emotional event and I really didn't have any idea what was happening here, but I want to thank August Mission for their efforts. They were here at the beginning. The Ukrainian people know that. Uh, they feel it. good to be here. We got off to a great start. It's been so nice to be hosted by incredibly generous people here in Ukraine. We're just kind of overwhelmed with the thoughtfulness of the people here, with their courage, and we're excited to get to work. Сьогодні важлива подія для нашої Хмельниччини. Сьогодні вже за підсумку співпраці з благодійною організацією Афіст Мішен ми підписали меморандум про співпрацю. 
Ми сьогодні зустрічаємо потужну делегацію Сполучених Штатів Америки зі штату Юта, які з відкритим добрим серцем, з допомогою для нашої держави і для нашого народу. Ми плануємо мати ряд заходів, в тому числі в майбутньому, по підтримці і розвитку економіки нашої держави в умовах війни. Хмельниччина сьогодні тиловий регіон і також потребує інвестицій, аби ми мали можливість забезпечити усім необхідним і населення, і внутрішньопереміщених осіб, які отримали прихисток в умовах неоголошеної війни в нашому регіоні. Тож, дякуємо Август Мішин, дякуємо всім благодійникам штату Юта, дякуємо владі штату Юта та Сполучених Штатів Америки. Спільними зусиллями разом до перемоги. Слава Україні! Дякую народу Сполучених Штатів Америки! It's an honor to be here representing my colleagues in the legislature. I'm Senate President Stuart Adams. There are 104 members of the legislature. We voted together, all 104 legislators, in support of Ukraine. I'm here to let Ukraine know that there's hope, and we bring hope, and we stand with Ukraine. We're so proud to be able to help, but we know what you're doing and what the things you're enduring. Utah's great not because of just the things that the government does, but because of our citizens. August Mission and the citizens of Utah stand with you, and we, we will continue to stand with you, not only now, but through the entire war. Important part begins, which is how do we move beyond uh, the first conversations and go do the things that will make a difference in the lives of the people in Utah and in Ukraine. I would like to mention that it has been a wonderful, but at the same time challenging, you know, mission, you know, to bring the first trade delegation from Utah State during the war that is taking place in Ukraine at the moment. So we have had tons of meetings every day, you know, and we've met a lot of people. It's so wonderful that Ukrainians are open to cooperate with the representatives of different branches of businesses from Utah. That's a phenomenal way to help people because it felt like we were not in the city, you're out of the city. And it's just an opportunity to help people who are displaced, right? Because all of the supplies that they need, and they're so grateful when you come, when they come there and get those supplies, it just warms your heart. You know, it just makes you feel good that somehow these folks are being cared for and being loved and made to feel like they're valuable. One of the things that I was confident would happen and has happened is when people get here on the ground and they meet the Ukrainian people and they have these experiences, it becomes very personal and they believe in this cause, they believe that these are good people, they want to help them. They see the fact that this is an unjust war and that they just want to, the opportunity to live their lives and uh, be free from you know, Russian influence and, and oppression. And it's just, it's an amazing experience every time you get over here. And I, was, I felt confident that if I could get people here and get them involved and, and get them to look these people in the eye and make these uh, connections and these relationships, that they would they would have the same experience that I've had. They would have the same experience that every single volunteer we brought over here has had, and, and that is that it's a life-changing experience. You, know, you become a fan of the Ukrainian people, you become a fan of this country, and you just create this, this really special bond having come over here. And, and part of that is that the Ukrainians are so generous. Um, they're such gracious hosts, and they appreciate the fact that we're here so much. And that was a common theme. They said, you know, we, we know that it's not easy to come into a war zone. Your loved ones must be worried about you, but the fact that you're here means a lot. And that, that was a, a constant theme throughout this trip, and it was something that I think resonated with both sides. 
And I really can't wait just to see where we go from here. We covered a lot of ground and a lot of uh, oblasts in, in Ukraine. You know, we, we moved from the border of Poland all the way to Kyiv. And I, and I would have to say that, you know, between all of the regions and the cities, uh, Kyiv is definitely the most challenging. We had five vehicles on the ground and we had five groups that needed to be in five different places at once. And so it became very challenging at times to get to places on time. Utah, we think, is the best state of all 50 because we believe in limited government and free markets and transparency. And we believe that we can help Ukraine as we move forward to understand limited markets, transparency, and what we can do together as businesses. With Mr. Koshko, we had the opportunity to talk about the significant efforts uh, the Ukrainian government's making to do a couple things. One, to win the war, and so the Ukraine can reap the peace dividends that will come uh, after this war is won. And two, what the Ukrainian government doing is now to position the Ukrainian economy to fully integrate with the European Union to meet the European standards, but also to come up with innovative trade policy to facilitate more market access, more sure and clear regulatory frameworks, as well as a stronger rule of law that will enable uh, U.S. and Utah companies to come to Ukraine and to prosper. We also had the opportunity to talk about the importance of Ukraine's uh, tech sector. And of course, Utah has been outperforming Silicon Valley with our Silicon Slopes. And, and we've been so successful in building up this homegrown, homegrown organic uh, tech industry. And as we talked about ways that Utah tech entrepreneurs, venture capitalists, and others can plug in to help Ukrainian tech companies go and do likewise. And we see a bright future and a very strong partnership between Utah's economy and Ukraine's economy. And as Utahns, as we want to help support Ukraine win this war and have a bright, prosperous future, it's incumbent upon all of us to plug in within our respective industries and our roles in, in, in the private sector, in civil society and government, to find ways to partner with uh, Ukrainians to help them succeed just like we've been very successful in Utah over the past 30 years. And we think if we could somehow combine the people of Ukraine with the people of Utah, it will be beneficial not only for Ukraine, but for Utah. And together we can get, we not only fight the war, but together we can help us sustain ourselves after the war. So we, this is an initial effort and we again appreciate your time and, and efforts to try to help us do that. Thank you. Th thank you for, for e each of you for, 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 your, uh, for your interest to Ukraine and your support, especially for humanitarian support. Uh, definitely this, let's say, support of the world from the first day of, of this massive aggression is what, something that adds the courage to, to Ukrainian, Ukrainian people. American Chamber IT Committee. Uh, I am really, really happy to welcome the Utah Trade Delegation here in Kiev, and we, we really appreciate your efforts in supporting Ukraine and especially IT, Ukrainian IT business. So we had an amazing and very productive meeting today and looking forward to even more exciting events in the future. Yeah, that's right. We'll be getting together with some of these people some more even as soon as tonight. And we were able to talk to a lot of really cool Ukrainian companies, and we can't wait to figure out more ways we can work together. I had a fair idea of what I wanted to achieve out of the trip before I came, but being with such a highly talented bunch of individuals, I achieved far more than I expected to achieve. So I, it, I, I think I well and truly exceeded my own expectations. We ended up the you know delegation with 30 almost 35 delegates you know state representatives we had president adams as part of the delegation uh, we had businessmen uh, and women from a whole bunch of different industries uh, bringing it to ukraine it technology uh, willing to fund and looking at startups uh, also uh, with the defense side of things the defense industry for obvious reasons and then the agricultural 
uh, and the agricultural is really, I think, a, a, a key piece for Ukraine. And, and obviously there's many more, you know, industries that we're looking at networking and, and yeah, building together now. We want to help Ukraine with their business development also. And so we brought businesses here and we hope to have additional business efforts. We want the reconstruction of Ukraine to be not a charity project. We want to be a partnership. I believe that the support of our support will give us the opportunity to develop our agricultural sector, to move forward. Thank you for the support, for the support of our support. We want to continue a humanitarian effort, but we also want to continue an economic development effort. We are here to demonstrate that we care about you and that we want to help you throughout this war and with rebuilding your nation. Always mission, they're the gateway to Ukraine. I can't imagine why anybody would want to go through a different gate than the gate that August Mission has created for us business leaders from the United States. They've made it, made the whole trip seamless, um, very easy to deal with everybody. They've opened up a lot of doors and um, created a lot of tremendous opportunities, which there's no way I could have done that on my own. And I don't think the World Trade Center could have done it either without August Mission as well. I think um, we've all worked together as a terrific team. And, um, and I think we've all had a very successful mission. It's been, it's, it's been fantastic. First of all, the people, the people are wonderful, simply wonderful open, interested in learning, appear to be good business partners. The culture, I think, lends itself to what we want to do together, is to make these business connections um, fruitful and beneficial for each side. Enjoyed an incredible meeting with IT Like Ukraine. Met with young entrepreneurs leading cybersecurity and IT companies, all hungry to connect and learn more about what we're doing in the state. Our goal is to connect our companies with the companies we met today and share ideas and, and help the industry move forward uh, across borders. It's uh, May 4th and we are at the networking meeting with uh, IT Ukraine Association and uh, members of IT Ukraine Association and uh, the delegation from state of Utah. Today we discuss all opportunities of our future cooperation in cybersecurity, cyber tech, in uh, our opportunities is uh, space tech and other. I think it will be a good meeting and it's opportunity for Ukraine and I would like to tell thank you for all people of state of Utah and uh, US people about their support and that uh, you don't afraid to be here with us in this, despite the war. It's this difficult time for Ukraine. Thank you to August Mission for putting together this delegation uh, for all of their great support on the ground here. I appreciate to Ukraine with love the incredible initiative that they've undertaken in building a thousand homes for people that have lost their homes here. They are gifting these homes. Their donors are gifting homes at no cost to these families. It is changing their lives. Um, they're also feeding 6,000 people two meals a day on the front lines. Uh, the Sterling Foundation is here with us. They're doing incredible work not only in Ukraine but around the world in over 30 countries. They are having a profound impact for good. 
the Maloof Foundation, has donated 18,000 mattresses to those in need here at a cost of $1.7 million. And they've committed 6,000 more to Ukraine. So we just have so many good people that are doing great things. And I just feel privileged to be a part of it. We've had uh, a wonderful several days with the World Trade Center Utah, representing the charity to Ukraine with love. We had a wonderful time uh, showing the people and businesses and organizations from Utah our efforts on the ground in Ukraine, gifting houses to people whose homes were destroyed in the war, giving someone a roof over their head who has been homeless for the past year. It was an amazing thing to, instead of trying to describe our efforts, to actually show them to people as they speak for themselves. It's also really great to see the work of other charitable organizations on the ground here, Save Ukraine, August Mission, and the others who are making so much possible for the people in Ukraine. My message is always that no one is coming to help these people. It's you and us. And my invitation is please continue to help. Don't look away. You really do have an opportunity to stretch across the ocean and change someone's life for the better and help these people survive the war that's taking place right here in the center of Europe. We've been able to meet with, with lots of individuals, uh, those that have been had so much devastating, that's devastation happened to them. But we've met with government officials who are struggling, trying to, to maintain the, the organization and the services that people need. Uh, August Mission has gone beyond, in my opinion, organizing an effort to try to, to give humanitarian aid and that can't stop. It really can't stop because the bombs keep coming and the people keep losing their homes and the devastation keeps happening. But there needs to be a sustainable effort. And August Mission has led the way in trying to look at that, how to, to, to implement that sustainable effort by bringing economic development and economic uh, opportunities to the people. So as we've met with government officials, I don't think they've really understood the capacity of what we bring with us. This week we've had the tremendous opportunity to have a delegation from Utah in Ukraine. And I feel so privileged to have been here on this trip to see firsthand what Ukrainians are going through every day. It is heartbreaking to go through the city and see barricades everywhere, such as this behind me, these sandbags. Every, they're bunkers. Uh, most nights we've had to go down into the uh, uh, basement of our hotel during air raids. This is day-to-day -day life here. Um, and, and in Kyiv, we're not even, you know, that close to the front lines. It's been a remarkable trip. The role of the Deseret News in all this is to try and bring truth and light to the world. And there's a lot of truth here with the Ukrainian people fighting for freedom, fighting for their families, for their children, for their grandchildren. And the meetings we've been involved with, uh, bearing witness to some of the atrocities that occurred. It's all really, really important. So with the reporters, Katie McKellar and our photojournalist, Scott Witterton, and myself, Doug Wilkes, uh, we wanted to be here. Uh, it's very important to us. So I'm working with the humanitarian groups. August Mission has been a remarkable partner, as was to Ukraine with love. Uh, it's a privilege, but now the work begins. Now we have a responsibility to bear witness, to tell those stories, and to help Ukraine rebuild the businesses, the opportunities of joining together to allow for additional prosperity. And I think the light has gone on. If Ukraine is going to win the war, and they are going to win the war, they have to win the war. They will need economic prosperity and economic revenue to be able to buy the, the, the supplies and things they need to be able to fight the war. And I really, really uh, again, honored to be part of that effort because of what August Mission has done. So me personally, Bruce Roberts and Stephen Lefer had a wonderful chance to attend the Minister of Energy yesterday and to discuss different points of cooperation between Ukraine, state, Utah and United States itself. 
The most interesting point for personal me was the demining issue that representatives of energy sector meets daily in the war zone. During the discussions with the Deputy Minister of Energy, we have agreed that we will arrange the meeting with the representatives from the Utah State, United States, who will be able to assist, provide the specialists from the demining sector who can come to Ukraine, to Ukrainian demining training centers, teach representatives from the energy sectors and help them to demine the areas in the eastern part of Ukraine and provide electricity to the city, villages and regions that are under attack every day. We're willing to start putting in the effort now uh, at this critical juncture when you know it's most needed when we can actually make economic improvements and partnerships that will help your economy now and pump some money into it and some investment and uh, hopefully help you win the war because that's that's got to be part of the strategy really important words and uh, support the u.s very significant and uh, very important for us and really this uh, tough period of time but we believe with military support with uh, protect the uh, defense protect the uh, air, de air de protection system when we were meeting with the ministry of foreign affairs yesterday which is right behind me um, the, our contact there the deputy minister who I work for by the way as the honorary consul was so grateful to our trade mission, for our delegation, for coming during a time of war. They understand and recognize the risks that were taken, the family that we left behind that are very concerned about us being here. And, and he said, you know, Utah was number one. They're the first state to come to Ukraine since the full-scale invasion. He said, we will not forget that. And I promise you, and we of course extended an invitation to come to the United States, and he said, I promise you that Utah will be our first stop when we visit the United States after the war is over. And these are relationships that we forged here that will last a lifetime. And we are so, I mean, this is the first step, right? This is the first step in something beautiful. When we go home, we have a lot of work to do to make sure that this is, that this, we get the greatest impact possible. And we're prepared to do that. And I can tell you that everyone, all the 30 delegates that are on this trade mission are all in. We are 100% invested. This is a life-changing experience. And I wish that everyone that was watching this video could be here with us. And I hope that you that you can visit Ukraine. We need we need this kind of action. We need uh, that uh, we, we need uh, to, to look into the future because that's what uh, yeah. our people that, 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 that remain, that stay, that, that, uh, that are working, they're fighting on the front line or, or staying here and helping to, to, to run the economy, view into, into the future, that, that, that we have um, some, some practical, some practical uh, support and not just you know, words of, of consolation. Being here in Kyiv these last couple of days has just been a whirlwind of activity. Uh, we've accomplished so much and one of the things that I noticed over the last couple of days is that we were gaining momentum. Each meeting that we had uh, would have such a, a positive outcome that the, the Ukrainians were speaking amongst themselves and letting them know that we were here, letting each other know that we were here and communicating the fact that we're serious, that we're here to do business, um, that we're action oriented and that we want to, and that we're really dedicated. It's not all pleasantries. And it's not just to make about, you know, exchanging business cards. It's about getting something done. And uh, I think that they they received that message. And as that message was received, you know, more and more of them wanted to talk to us, more and more of the ministries and other, other upper governmental uh, individuals wanted to get involved and have these conversations. Excited to see where this thing is, is going to go. Um, I think that for sure, We'll be back in some way, shape, or form. I'm sure there's going to be successive uh, delegations. I think that uh, in order to make them more effective in the future, programming them specifically around certain industries so we can really dig into to, uh, getting work done in a certain area. I 
think Ukraine is a very special place that when someone comes to it, they just can't help but want to come back. And that's because of the amazing people that are here in Ukraine. And we've had a chance to meet with so many of them, whether they were government leaders, business leaders, leaders of industry across the board. This has been an amazing trip to be able to meet those types of people. And I'll just add uh, to what you were saying that what has been interesting to me especially, as someone who has been to Ukraine a number of times, is to see the difference uh, in innovation and hope that we see from the Ukrainian people that probably wasn't here 20 years ago. There have been major reforms in democracy and if there's any silver lining uh, that has come out of this conflict with Russia, um, it is that Ukraine is hungry. They want freedom, they want to unite with the West, and uh, they want to unite with the state of Utah. And so it's been great to be able to bring them those connections that they've been so hungry for. We had an incredible meeting with Minister Fedorov. We talked about the ways that he and his team are transforming really the whole landscape of Ukraine when it comes to their services uh, that are provided to their citizens. They have all-in-one app for the state that makes so many critical state services more accessible. It's very well executed and they're not only doing things that are innovative on a national level, it's on a global level and, and frankly there's a lot that we're taking notes on for our team as far as what we can do better or how we can innovate in Utah to provide even greater services for our citizens. So extremely impressive group. We're very excited to continue the conversations with them and plan to not only talk some more in the interim, but to have some of them come to Utah to meet with us. So just a very, very impressive, bright group of people. And we couldn't be more excited to keep learning from them and then supporting them in some ways we discussed as well. Uh, couldn't, couldn't be better to have that time with them today. The humanitarian meetings were very important, like going to the hospital, meeting the, ver the veterans. That was extremely important because uh, that really cements the purpose of why we're here and really um, hardens my resolve to achieving things not just for our company but for the people of Ukraine and for the United States of America as well and their assistance to the people of Ukraine. I've also enjoyed of course uh, meeting with the military leaders and meeting with the Minister of Defence would have been definitely my favourite meeting. He looked us straight down the eye and told us exactly what he needed and um, he had that strong sense of resolve in his eye which I absolutely love. It was a great trip. Uh, we came for the Utah Aerospace and Defense Association, uh, which covers aerospace, defense, intelligence, uh, cybersecurity, space exploration, weapons, arms. This was a great trip to be able to connect companies and the military all over Ukraine with companies and the military back in the United States. And I think it was really successful. meeting in Lviv today with probably about a hundred different uh, leaders in the IT space and what was so interesting to me is they came and showed me the ideas they said look this is a product that we just developed and is now rolling out for the military in Ukraine or hey look at these you know different designs that we've done with this company we've even reached out to a company in the United States and in, in at uh, Bloomingdale's they have a display there and they want to be able to connect with Utah businesses. They have great ideas, a lot of energy, um, and they're just ready. Uh, it's a place like no other that is just sitting there waiting for, for businesses to come by and give them opportunities uh, that will make not only Ukraine strong, um, but Utah strong. I'm very pleased uh, that uh, you brought so many business and uh, like government leaders uh, to Ukraine. I'm really impressed by what they were saying and what uh, their experience here in Ukraine. 
Uh, I expect that uh, our Ukrainian leaders from business gonna impress your business leaders from Utah and they're gonna build something together that would be beneficial both for Ukraine and United States. And uh, I hope that uh, together with your uh, support, Ukraine gonna win in this war and strengthen democracy through the world. Thank you very much. This was the best part for me in Lviv because I think we found partners that we can actually help through some business consulting and tutoring about how to get your business up and running for micro and small business needs. Very open, made good connections, so for me this was the best place to do business here. And then of course the city. It's just phenomenal, it's just beautiful. This has been a great opportunity for us to represent the Sterling Foundation in Ukraine. We have appreciated the opportunity to get to know the other members of the delegation better and to see where our objectives intersect and to learn how we can work together better. Seeing Ukraine has been a blessing and a privilege. I look forward to being able to do more work in Ukraine. Uh, it's been a great pleasure being here. It's been fun to watch some of the partners like August Mission and To Ukraine With Love in action, doing what they do best. And we're looking forward to more work in Ukraine. And it's, it's been a delight to be with all of our colleagues from Utah and uh, build those associations. And we're grateful for the work that everyone is doing. Today we were able to connect with Lviv IT Cluster. This is an incredible organization here in the city that represents a lot of the technological innovation taking place throughout the entire country, but it acts as an aggregator and a convener of some of the smartest, most vibrant entrepreneurs here in Lviv. So we had an opportunity to intro introduce ourselves as the Utah delegation and talk about what we're doing exchange ideas, which has been hugely critical. We want to work with our counterparts in Lviv, take these ideas and innovations back to Utah and form a collaboration where we can help each other, especially as the war ends and we help this wonderful country rebuild itself. Hi, my name is Yuri. I'm a deputy CEO of UIT Cluster. The Utah companies who came here are really want to make new friends, not only partners. And I hope this visit will help Ukrainian and United States relationships grow big, make better, and continue in future many, many other interesting projects. Um, we came to Lviv to meet with local tech leaders, entrepreneurs. Uh, we have 293 companies here that are represented, 92,000 employees. We're talking about bringing all of their um, hubs, their American hubs to Utah and why they should come to Utah and, and this, the strong economy Utah has um, to lift where we stand and we stand with Ukraine. So people are interested in getting some venture capitalist backing. They're interested in having mentors in the United States as they create hubs in Salt Lake City uh, to continue our relationships and our partnerships and to build together. Very excited to be here in Ukraine. Uh, when we put this together, we thought that we would bring just a little hope. Uh, kind of had some expectations that some of the people here in Ukraine, would, we would start just planting a seed with them to start doing some of the businesses that we're doing here in America and, and figured that a lot of it wouldn't be ready until after the war. But uh, the Ukrainians have great pride and have already accepted the fact that they're going to have victory and win this war. and They're ready to start doing business right now. And we are ecstatic to help them start business and share our technologies. And honestly, they have a lot to show with us too. I, I'm so surprised in the agriculture sector that they do so much more with so less. And, uh, uh, and so we're excited to share some of our more advanced technologies to allow them to do even more cheaper, better, and faster. Just love the people here. Uh, they feel like brothers and sisters. We are glad to have, have met them and to establish these relationships and uh, looking forward to the future with Ukraine.
So it's been a busy week here in Ukraine. Started in Warsaw and made our way here to Kyiv. We've had dozens of meetings uh, with different objectives uh, and different people uh, leading out on those objectives. And so primarily our focus was both humanitarian and trade. And within trade, uh, there were three sectors we found to be of most interest, at least uh, immediately, right? So aerospace and defense, given the state of war here in Ukraine, you have IT sector, uh, which is, and we had a, a terrific meeting yesterday with the Minister of Digital Transformation. So Ukraine is actually in some ways ahead of the game in tech. And so connecting Utah's tech sector with Ukraine's. Uh, and then third was agriculture. Just to explore what possibilities might exist, given it being their largest sector, uh, the breadbasket of the world. So those are the three uh, kind of key sectors that we were focused on, but obviously uh, a big common thread throughout this was humanitarian aid. What are we doing now? What can we do into the future? Uh, as well as uh, into reconstruction and the rebuilding of Ukraine uh, and its infrastructure uh, during and uh, hopefully uh, soon here uh, after the war. We have about 30 of us together. We have some public officials as well as business officials. Um, and so it's been a, it's been a pleasure to, to bring this group together and you felt the spirit of the Ukrainian people, I think that's probably been said by others. We've had a fantastic experience here in Kyiv. It's been, fan it's been amazing to see as, a, as Team Utah, we've broken out across the city how much momentum that we've built and how many doors that have been opened for us to be able to go out and plug in and support across the full range of government to government partnerships, business partnerships, and humanitarian work. It's been so interesting things to see just over the past 36 hours how many additional meetings as other ministries and other ministers and key business leaders have learned about our Utah delegation here in Kiev, and they want to be a part of what we're doing here. Our, our visit is deeply appreciated. Um, people have emphasized over and over how it helps them feel normal, helps them feel that they're not ostracized in the international community. When they see people have traveled as far as we've traveled and have worked as hard as we've worked. The key part now for all of us is to follow up. We need to make sure we compile all of the highlights from all the different meetings, probably 70 or 75 different meetings at this point. And we need to know what were the key highlights, who are the key contacts, what are the action items, and who's gonna do what by when. And so we make sure we do good by our Ukrainian partners to go home and continue to lean in to build uh, upon the successful trip we've had so far. People we've met have been incredible. Just um, the talent and the thought and how articulate everyone is and how welcoming they are has been exceptional. From the home gifting, I think that was uh, one of my favorite parts is being able to be there and watch. People have such gratitude and such, it just was a, 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 almost a sacred experience to watch that. It was really special. Um, the business meetings, of course, you know, we, we want to partner with Ukraine. We don't just want to come and and uh, say hi and give them money and, and walk away. We want to create a strong economy with them, a strong ecosystem, and everyone here has been really receptive to that, and we feel really fortunate that we get to be a part of that. So we're excited to have them come to Utah. We're excited to build. We're excited to create partnerships, and we feel like that's been received really well. But what I can tell you is that being here, I have also been greatly inspired by the resolve of Ukraine and the Ukrainian people. They, it is an inspiration not only to Utah, but to the world. Their courage and determination is just remarkable. And every single meeting that we've had, and we've met with many different cabinet ministers, uh, seven or eight cabinet ministers, um, as well as the office of the president, they have all said, we will not stop until this war is won. And I tell you, I look into their eyes and I know that they are right. This is a good versus evil story. This isn't some, you know, civil war or something. No, this is an invasion by an aggressor that has no right to be here. And good has to prevail. Utah has to stand up and, and defend the good people of Ukraine.
members of the delegation have just been incredible. Everyone's had such a great attitude. Uh, everybody's worked together. They've all been very supportive of uh, not only August mission and what we've tried to put together and, and you know kind of our job as trip quarterback making all the moving pieces happen but uh, also just collaborative in nature right just coming with an attitude of uh, you know, with the humble with humility and with a good attitude and just being willing, willing to do put in the work and, and, and make sure that everybody wins. We couldn't have done this really without you know getting some of these partners involved. Um, World Trade Center has been incredible. Uh, they really brought the horsepower to to this thing, uh, enabling us to get elected leaders, elected officials from the state of Utah to come along, and you know having the um, the network to reach out to businesses that were interested, and just help us find these these partners. I mean, really, the delegation grew to the point where we had to turn people away, and so we know that there's. And certainly, for sure, when we go back and word spreads about what we did and what we accomplished, the list of people that are waiting to go and have this experience is only going to expand. It's been such a privilege to put together this delegation. I just want to thank August Mission for the incredible work, not only that they've done in this delegation for this trade mission, but for the substantial difference that they are making here in Ukraine. I'm grateful for um, our governor and first lady uh, for their support of Ukraine over the last 14 months, for um, President uh, Stuart Adams of the Senate uh, and, for and for leading this delegation here. August mission that has elevated Utah and elevated America in the eyes of the Ukrainian people. But most importantly, it has helped people and it, it's an amazing, uh, amazing experience. And you can't help but feel good, warm, along with the, the anxiety of seeing the devastation. So there's a mixed emotion, but it's been a great experience. Last four days, five, we spent with a big group of people, of great people who was willing to help my country and they came here for to support our businesses, our people, the civilians in this very unfair time and unfair war. I'm very grateful to everyone, absolutely everyone who was managing all this. I'm part of that, but I always say that I'm just Vicky, I'm local, I'm from here. But you guys came here from another part of the planet for to help my country. And I, can, I don't have a words for to express myself, my feelings, uh, how grateful I am for everything what you're doing for us. Uh, I'm so glad that I met so incredible people. And I know that together we're stronger and we can do these changes just when we're staying together and united. So thanks to everyone. And I hope you had a great experience during this trip. I will wait for you here again.